Hey, ¿qué tal amigos? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with another video this week about some of the things that have caught my attention in the local and international press about what's been going on in this country. We'll have a look at some of these things and I'll give my uh, 20 cents worth and uh, hopefully you'll give your comments on some of the things that we talk about here today as well. Now, the first thing that caught my eye was in an online newspaper called The Local, and uh, it was questioning the the Spanish economic recovery, let's say. Uh, politicians in this country have been going on, especially the ones in, in power, have been going on over the last couple of years about how wonderful the economy is now, how many jobs are being created, that we're reaping the rewards of the policies that were put in place by this government some years ago. And the newspaper, The Local, questions the validity of the recovery with an article that they wrote that is titled Seven Facts That Show the Dark Reality of Spain's Economic Recovery. And the seven facts that they mention are inequality. The rich, they say, are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. I think that's a characteristic in a lot of countries nowadays, not only here in Spain. Uh, it tends to be the case that, uh, you know, the top uh, people are getting all the money and the people down the bottom are getting poorer and poorer. And uh, here in Spain, it doesn't seem to be any different. They also say that the poor seem to be stuck in a bit of a rut, that it's difficult for them to get out of that poverty, to get above the poverty line, let's say. They also mentioned the glass ceiling that is prominent in many companies here in Spain, the difficulties that women have to get promoted, to get to the top of these companies, which is something also that is holding Spain's recovery back. Youth unemployment, again, another big factor that they mention here in some areas, youth unemployment is still in the 40% range, if not more. So so really, how can you say that there is an economic recovery with youth unemployment still so high? Stagnant wages, another point that they mention as well. Wages are stagnant. They haven't been growing. Uh, people are still getting paid the same amount of money that they were 10 or 12 years ago. And if people lost their jobs, most likely they have come back to uh, a lot less money than they were before. So that's also a factor that they mention. And the final thing they mention in the article is about public spending, how cuts to education, cuts to health uh, haven't uh, recovered. You know, the, the government still isn't putting money into these areas uh, like they were uh, 10, 15 years ago. And it's the people that use the uh, system, the people that use the education system, the parents that have to, uh, that have to uh, you know, pick up the cost of those cuts. So uh, yeah, seven valid points that question the economic recovery here in Spain. Now, the next thing that caught my attention was an article that was published in the Sunday Times a couple of weeks ago by an author called Chris Haslam. And uh, it made the mainstream media here this week. I don't think there was a newspaper, radio station, television station that didn't pick up on this article. The article was called How to Be Spanish. And it was a bit of a tongue in cheek look at, uh, you know, how to fit into the Spanish culture if you are English or if you are not Spanish. And uh, some of the things that he mentioned in the article, I'll just get it up here so I can say, he said, uh, forget Anglo-Saxon notions of politeness, discretion and decorum. Being Spanish involves walking into a bar and kissing a complete stranger. He also says, uh, you, you know, that you don't need to use please and thank you very often here. Uh, if you're a lady, carry a fan. You also need to unlock that potty mouth, he said. And of course, you need to learn food etiquette. Now, uh, I read the article. Uh, I didn't think it was all that offensive, to be honest. Uh, the Spanish were up in arms. For me, it was just a bit of a tongue-in-cheek look at Spain using a lot of the old cliches that many people have about this country. I don't think it was anything to be offended by. The uh, right-wing newspaper in this country, ABC, decided to uh, write a reply letter saying how to be British, in which they insult British culture. 
Now, Spain seems to be a bit sensitive at the moment about uh, this type of criticism. It's always been a fact that you can't really talk negatively about Spain if you're not Spanish. You know, Spanish people can criticize their country all they want, but uh, don't do it if you're not from Spain. And of course, Mr. Haslam seems to have found that out the hard way. Uh, Spain is, uh, you know, sensitive at the moment. Why? Because of the Catalonia crisis, perhaps the, the damaged reputation that they have internationally, the political prisoner saga that's going on here. People are questioning the democracy, as I said last week, and uh, people are sensitive, you know, more than they have been uh, in the past, perhaps. And um, this, uh, the author was called ignorant. He was called arrogant. And, uh, you know, was subject to, uh, to uh, heaps and heaps of abuse on uh, Twitter and other social media. In fact, the uh, local newspaper here, El País, the English section of that uh, paper, the English editor felt that he also needed to write an article in reply to uh, Mr. Haslam. And uh, yeah, I think it was all a little bit over the top, the reaction uh, personally, as I said before, it seemed to be a bit of a tongue in cheek, uh, uh, a humorous way of uh, writing. I thought it was quite well written to tell you the truth, but you know, Spanish people didn't see it that way, and uh, you know those were the results. So uh, hopefully it won't escalate into anything more serious than that. In fact, the uh, other newspaper that I mentioned before, the uh, the local, they also have an article on their front page which is called "Quirky Habits That You Can't Help Picking Up." You know, after living in Spain, and they mention a lot of the things that uh, you know that uh, the the guy mentioned in the Sunday Times article. So uh, yeah, I mean these are just things that you see here in Spain. Um, you know, some of the things that they mention in that article that I've got here, for example, kissing strangers, uh, eating at late hours, swearing, barely tipping, using fans that you need to eat standing up, being direct. And uh, shouting everybody on your birthday. Yeah, those are some of the things that they mentioned. So some of the things were also written by Mr. Haslam, but uh, the uh, local obviously didn't receive the backlash that the Sunday Times did. So uh, there we go. That was something that caught my attention this week. Now, another thing that uh, I saw this week was the, uh, the rich list. Spain's rich list was published. Uh, there were uh, 200 or so people published in this article. And as we can see here, the people uh, at the top of the list are Amanthi Ortega, who is the owner of the Inditex Group, uh, the Zara uh, clothing store. The next person here, Juan Roig, uh, who is the owner of Mercadona, which is a uh, famous supermarket here in Spain. Rafael Del Pino and family, construction company. Sandra Ortega, the daughter of Amanthi Ortega, so obviously again related to the Inditex group. Francisco y John Riveras, uh, in industry automation. Sol Daurella, who is the oh, and family, the, the, the owners of the Coca-Cola bottling uh, factory here in Spain. Uh, Juan and Carlos March, they own a bank. Victor Grifols, uh, who is in uh, the health industry, the Entrecanales family, construction, and of course here Isaac Andrik, who is the owner of Mango, also a big uh, textile company uh, here in Spain and around the world. And we can see the, uh, the other people here on the list as well. Uh, real estate, construction, banking, banking, insurance, uh, security, Company Prosegur, big a uh, big security company, and uh, El Corte Inglés, number seventeen here, uh, the famous uh, department store or distribution network, as they call it here. Now, one thing about this list was that this is really old money. There's no uh, tech entrepreneurs in this list. Uh, it's a characteristic here that a lot of the uh, people on the list are, you know, that come from the traditional money, family money, uh, not many young people. And uh, none of the uh, internet uh, entrepreneurs have uh, popped into the rich list here in Spain yet. So we'll see over the next few years whether that changes. But at the moment, it's still the traditional the traditional families and another interesting point that i picked up was the the distribution of the money so you know the uh, inditex galicia valencia madrid galicia madrid catalonia baleares catalonia madrid and catalonia so the majority 
in the two big cities here in Spain, as uh, you would uh, expect to be the case in a country like this. So, so uh, yeah, so an interesting article. And the final thing that caught my attention this week, something that I saw today, in fact, was from the Express newspaper in the UK, and it was also called... Uh, how to eat like a local when in Spain. Now, it seems people are obsessed with Spain and they're trying to eat like locals. They're trying to be like the Spanish. And uh, the Express gives a list of things that will make you blend in more when you come here and you are dining. So, for example, they mention the dining times. They mention that you need to eat late. They also mention that kids are welcome in restaurants. Kids are not frowned upon when you go to a restaurant. People like kids to come into the restaurant. They don't mind if they're shouting, if they're playing and uh, things along those lines. They also mentioned the variety of the food. You know, don't come to Spain and only eat paella and uh, Spanish omelette. There are many, many other things that you can eat as well, uh, apart from, uh, you know, the ham that I just mentioned before. And they also said to uh, go for the menú del día. That's the best value thing that you can eat here in Spain, the menú del día. Don't go for the more expensive a la carte options. Stick to the menú del día. Bring the kids. Try different different things and remember to eat late. That was how they summed up this article here in the Express. And that's all that I have for today. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you have something that you can add to the conversation, please feel free to do it. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, hasta luego.